guys, public Postgres instances are being compromised and used as a botnet to mine Bitcoin. This one is interesting. Let's just jump into it. So there is a, a botnet called PG Mino, stands for Postgres Miner, and it is scanning the internet for publicly accessible Postgres instances, guessing the Postgres password, getting into the actual database using the Postgres credentials, and then getting access to the operating system and installing the PG Miner software, which actually used that instance to mine Bitcoin. How about we jump into it and see, explain exactly how this works. It's very, very interesting. So the first thing that this uh, botnet does, it, it is scans public network ranges uh, IP for the port 5432, which is the default port for Post Post Postgres instances. So the, the, we talked about this all the time, guys, right? There is no need for the Postgres database to be publicly accessible. The Postgres database should only be accessible from a certain IP addresses, and those are the backend application that needs access to this database. Having a Postgres instance that is just open for anyone to just connect to just doesn't make any sense, right? Not just it's it's insecure, plus it doesn't make any sense. So regardless, so there are b bad practices out there, and there are those instances living in in, in Postgres elephant elephant sql and and uh, aws and other instances so we have those still there is a there is still a password to get in right the next thing that this software does it tries to guess the default username which is what the postgres username it, tr it tries to guess the ba the password of that username and that's another thing that we have to talk about right postgres the default postgres user should be disabled right because why do you have it? Try as much as possible to not give clues of your uh, database to outside world. So the Postgres user, why do you have to use it? Disable that, create a, a brand new one just for you. So just make their life a little bit harder, essentially. Anyway, so there is a Postgres user and they would try to brute for the password to get into the password, to, to get into the database as initially, right? That Postgres user is an administrator, so it technically do can do pretty much anything in the database. So once you get access to that, if you think about it, now they can technically encrypt the databases, they can pull off a ransomware by encrypting the password, deleting it and uploading the archive to their own uh, uh, instance and they say hey if you want if you want your database and your data uh give us um give us this much bitcoins uh on this bitcoin address right so they could have done that but they decided in this case to silently use that instance to mine bitcoin instead how do you do how do they do that though right okay they have access to the postcards database but they cannot run programs with that right it's just a database right it's it's it, you cannot run programs with that here's the intelligent part and uh, it's not really explained in this article but i did a little bit dig in and there's there are many ways to do that so there is a command called copy from and copy to program in postgres what this does here are some examples of what you can do so copy from you can give it a table, copy the table name from and a file name or anything that is on this, the program itself. And what it would do, it will copy the content of this file on the operating system to this table. So you can technically copy anything you want as long as the username running the Postgres instance itself has privilege to access that directly you will be able to access it. You can copy pretty much anything you want from there, right? So that's one way to do it, right? So you can copy the SSH keys that are there. You can copy if there are passwords, you can copy there. You can copy stuff from there. The other way, you can use cop copy to, which is the other way. You can inject stuff into the Postgres instance. So here's what you can do as an attacker to access the operating system, to be able to SSH into the operating system itself using Postgres. 
you can create an SSH keys on your attacker machine, your terminal machine. That will give you a public key and a private key. You take your public key and then you store it in a table in this database, right? Let's call it SSH. And then using that table, you can com you do the command copy SSH, the table itself, which has the public your public key to a program and you specify the path where all the authorized SSH keys are and you can shove your authorized public key into the operating system again if you if the postgres user uh, the, if the user running the postgres uh, instance have access you will just write it there so the next time you SSH into the machine you will be presenting your public key and the server will say, oh, this public key is actually trusted. So let me actually encrypt a message, send it back to you. You will have the private key, so you'll be able to decrypt the message. And this way you will establish a trust with that, with the, with the victim machine, which is the Postgres. And you'll be able to SSH into the machine. Once you SSH into the machine, it's the wild, wild west. You can run your shady botnet that essentially mine Bitcoin. And that is it, basically. Right? This one is really dangerous, guys. And uh, here's, here's a nice uh, diagram of what, how, what, they, what they're actually doing. The attacker is using Tor so they can be identified. And then in, from Tor, they will uh, run exactly what we described. And then they will mine the shit out of everything. Essentially mining Bitcoins. All right, guys, that's it for me today. What do you think about this attack? Let me know in the comment section below. I'm going to see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye.